Hello everyone, welcome to the very first Adrian Snary Unlearning Podcast. And actually feels good to say that, Jana. I was yeah. wondering how it was going to sound. But uh, yeah, thanks very much everyone for being along. And of course, Marty over there. Thanks for <laughs> sitting oh, here. Marty. <laughs> um, yeah, today I'm joined by Jana. Um, many may know Jana from the group she started how long ago now? A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, 18 months ago, named uh, Perth Tribe Awakening. And uh, Jana returns for a much overdue second podcast. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for having me. So excited ah, to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah, it feels good to do and I'm just trying to like feel it out. But I guess, you know, um, the Sotero thing was like something that started a couple of years ago um, with not really un- any understanding where I wanted to go with it. But with um, it's actually a ceremony with the medicine with ayahuasca um, sort of showed me once that I should change it from Statera to my name, Adrian mm-hmm. Snary, um, because it just gets rid of that like, one more veil. And the Statera name was like a one veil there. So it's like bringing it more back to me mm. speaking and, of course, the guests and all those who are involved with watching it as well. So, yeah. Keeping it more authentic. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and it's an honor to have you on, Shana. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's so exciting to um, be here. And it, it actually feels important for me as well, like this first Good. Adrian Snary Unlearning podcast. And, sure. Uh, yeah. And that's what it's really, I think, about. I think what like all the knowledge that we're able to access now and all the things we're able to see and witness because of the internet like i i think it's also important that to be able to take all that in properly all this new information that we actually have to unlearn what we have learned up until that point because a lot of what we have learned isn't really conducive to a happy joyous lifestyle no no or world for that mm. example and it's not it's not serving us anymore and no. we kind of look at our parents and we look what we've created we look at what we've created so far mm. um, and there's a lot of great things you know mm. technology and the world that we're living in right now it's really convenient and, and I, I actually love it <laughs> mm, yeah definitely yeah <laughs> you know yeah. Um, but there are some things like you know kind of like with with prescription drugs when you buy it off the counter and, mm. and there's like a list of side effects and our lifestyle it's great yeah but like the side effects are sure. huge and and um they often you know this destroy the purpose of creating what we've created mm. convenience but then you know we're not gonna live longer than another hundred years and there'll be the end of humanity if we continue with what we've been doing, you know? Mm, yeah. You know, with our sure. planet and how we're abusing and yeah. using and abusing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. But I think uh and like what you're obviously in a privileged position to be able to witness as well is like this real change where people are uh, actively doing things now. Like mm. um you know, there's been quite a lot of talk over the last twenty, thirty years, I guess even since the sixties, yeah. you know, about like social evolution and you know um, what we need to do but like it's like now people are actually putting in the steps and we have, and a lot of that i think comes to the fact that we can uh group together now and connect mm. and and share information and then come up with plans and strategies to help each other yeah. which is a fantastic it's amazing to witness because before you would feel like you're the odd one out in your family and then yeah you go on face, or, yeah you yeah. go on facebook and you realize there's so many of us yeah and, and you don't feel you actually feel better about what you're doing and what's up for you and I'm glad you mentioned that because I definitely wanted to talk about that what I witnessed um, on uh, Perth Tribe Awakening page in the last year and so um, is just emergence of so many groups there were some groups that were there before and they were doing the work before but there's a lot you know a lot of new groups coming up Mm -hmm. and and they are around you know about either you know, meditation, different type of yoga, I don't know, tantra, men's groups, you know, brother gr- brothers groups, sisters groups, sister circles, um, you name it. And they mm. all have, and, I've, and I try as much as I can um, to go and witness what they're about and, you mm. know, trial and, and experience. Yeah, it. to experience. Yeah. So I know what these people are doing. And, sure. and um, yeah, so 
what comes up there is, you know, everybody is trying to create the same thing. Everybody is starting off from tapping into what's authentically present for them mm. and, and looking for some sort of discipline that's going to anchor them into their journey, mm. uh, be it yoga or meditation or whatever they choose to do. Sure. Music, dancing, um, you know, yeah. drumming on the beach and I yeah. don't even know, like full moon dancing and God yeah. knows what. And, 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 but behind it all, there's always that a number of values that are s and intentions that are similar for all of them mm. like there's awakening there's empowerment there is love self-love there's acceptance authenticity mm. growth learning or unlearning mm -hmm. you know what we've learned so far mm -hmm. so yeah it, it's a very powerful um, place uh, space and time that we're in mm. and, and being able to witness that you know through the media through so social network you know yeah yeah it's, it's great yeah definitely yeah mm. I, and we're definitely in very fortunate times and I've, and it it seems to keep expanding upon itself and building upon itself i should say and uh, coming up to the end of 2015 just a few short days ago there was lots of talk by a lot of people in perth but also different um people around the world i'm sure people watching this had spoke to different people as well about how 2016 feels like it's going to be a big year yeah. like it just i mean we can feel it individually and then but also we really feel it as a collective now as well mm. and it, there's so much optimism for it like i think we're at unprecedented times or we're in unprecedented times at the moment and it's we're really getting to the point now where the decision is up to us mm. like no longer is it in the hands of um the powerful, you know, the old school money mm. or, you know, bureaucracies, governments, military. I really feel like we're, as a general population, really starting to become aware of our power. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing to witness. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, within and around you. And um, that kind of, that brings me to something that just in December happened and I became aware of, uh, Freya from Earth Heart mm -hmm. uh, in... in um, in Fremantle called me and, and mentioned that Alison Jarrod is uh, organizing this um, gathering on her property uh, and it was going to be about unification of intention. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she said that, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Because mm. if we have that, if we imagine if we had like this global unification of intention and if we have the highest universal sort of values in each of the circles and groups you go to. So it doesn't mm. really matter, like matter, are you gonna be sitting in brother's circle or you're gonna be sitting manifesting magic or ecstatic dancing. Mm. If behind that particular event uh, is a person who is organizing it or people who are organizing it and setting the, um, the frequency and of the intention of, I don't know, peace, Mm. unity compassion love compassion yeah. kindness mm. so regardless where we choose to go and I'm like I, I might resonate more to sit with you than with somebody else mm. wherever I go that's what I'm going to find at the level that I resonate with sure and yep. I got so excited about that and mm. and now talking about 2016 you know that that's a possibility and and when we talk yeah. about power like you mentioned you know we've it's unprecedented and and we've got this power like I find that power these days, I'm not 100% sure, but I feel that it's more within us to choose how we are going to respond to a mm. situation. So, and even like the religions say you have free will. And I mm. remember when I was just kind of discovering religions and thinking about that and judging them and figuring them out and how does this work? Mm. So what sort of free will is that if, I can't do this and I can't do that and that it's not free will. Mm. And, you know, you can't really freely choose everything in your life or can you, you know, with conscious creating. Um, I, think it's, I think it's 50-50. That's my belief. Yeah, but, yeah, that's a huge one. That's a topic for another time. That's <laughs> for another time, that's for sure. But ultimately, what, what, what it comes down to is, uh, I think, free will is where you can choose who you're going to be in, in face of mm -hmm. something that you might not like mm -hmm. or 
you know how how are how are we going to create this new world like yeah. this i love the idea i love when when i hear it you know light filled world like mm. oh wow you know so you're and, talking about like how we respond to things that are like adversely affect us yeah and, that, and, that, and that's what's a big part of what we're doing better as a collective species is we're actually responding to these situations a lot better first there are individual actions which then um correlate on a greater level as well it's like i love this topic i'm so glad we're talking about it because there is a lot there is still a lot of triggers that come up on let's say on facebook we love our little facebook because it's such a great avenue you know like Mm. for us to explore all these things because what happens is like oh there is us and then there is them and they are fake and we are you know we are the true ones we do the right things and they do the wrong things Mm. and and there's you know there's still a lot of judgment Mm. and um i think for every single one of us it really needs to go back to self Mm. and always starting from ourselves so where am i at right now Mm. every single one of us should try to take responsibility rather than look around oh they're wrong they're wrong yeah. they're fake and these blame guys are, and things like yeah, yeah these guys are destroying you know like hold yeah. on first like go back to basics self-awareness where am i at what am i first of all what am i doing in my immediate you know my family my friends mm. what am i creating around myself mm. where i'm at is what's up for me is it anger like, why, why am i angry what's up what am i what, mm. what, what why are you he- what are you here to teach me anger mm. or you know you might be floating on a cloud and you might be really really in a good place mm. but knowing life it kind, it's kind of changes all the time because we we get to the top and then we go down to learn and we get to the top and we go down to learn so mm. I think w- what I'm trying to say is for every single one of us, it has to start from self-inquiry, mm-hmm. self-awareness, and people seek that through different things, you, you know, yoga, meditation, uh, reading books, yeah. uh, plant medicines, you know, I don't know, there's so many, many different ways to do it. Yeah, um, Yeah. so that that's a powerful place. And then from there, we usually start connecting with people who are now at a similar frequency or similar page and learning similar things as us and then we can bounce ideas Mm. you know and we can learn from each other we can support each other we can reach out to to a new friend who kind of understands what i'm going through in Mm. that moment and slowly from that individual level we are all learning and and becoming powerful collectively sure and and I do want to tell you that story that I mentioned. Yeah, um, can I just quickly, mm. can we just quickly chat about the, um, I really like to just go back to that point of like, we had that, we just spoke about it earlier before the podcast, Rob, that classic example of someone who came along and was just attention seeking really. Yeah. And perhaps what they um, believe they were doing was legitimate and yeah. all that but it, we don't know their motives we, we don't, know their motives. don't know their motives we can just judge we can judge but it doesn't mean I, I think we should also define not define but like look at the word judgment and i don't it, judgment in um spiritual circles is often and widely thought of as being a negative thing like it's you know judge and judgment does separate us and it does definitely but i think there are occasions where we need to be discerning and I prefer that word discerning rather than judgment. Judgment, And like if there's a flow or an equilibrium or a vibration within within a group of people or a tribe and someone comes along and disrupts that, I mean, in this binary universe, there's two ways to handle it. It's either um, ignore them and understand that this is what's going on and basically let them do their thing Mm. or you have a chat to them not it would be preferable to like pull them aside and say hey man what what, what's the reason for you posting this and yeah you know is there an intention behind this or are you just seeking attention or especially with this particular one that's a powerful question yeah (laughs) because this one that we that we're talking about was was playing on people's vulnerabilities of money which for a lot of people is a is a um especially in the the spiritual community Mm. a lot of people have issues talking about money and discussing money even thinking about money which is a a shame and something that um needs to change if we're going to take ownership of that um as again as a as a species as a humanity um but yeah i mean this guy came along and was really playing on those 
vulnerabilities and yeah I, personally i didn't like it at all mm. and um yeah i perhaps got to a point where i've seen a bit of that go on in not just here in perth but also you know in other circles around the world and it's like i get a bit um I don't know what to make of it, like because there's a lot of that. Well, this is just this person's um, that's process, and that's if someone if they take advantage of someone else, and then that's that person's, that's where they're at, and all that. But it's like it's like almost like this thing of well, just however however it goes, whatever however it flows. And, and as I'm listening, which to I don't you, really yeah, resonate with. Yeah, um, it reminded me of somebody else who came. I, I people we're talking about. I think they generally because they post. They just want attention mm. for what they're doing. Mm. And sometimes they'll post things that is not about money. They'll be, you know, if you want this in your life. Oh, yeah, blah, definitely. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, sure. There's, there's nothing they're really offering. Yeah. There's no value in it. Sure. It's just traffic, internet traffic yeah. that they're trying. And, it's, and it is a bit annoying. And it has only been really, this only, it's only been this one. Like, it's no, only no, this. there's been a lot. Oh, has it? Okay. Well, there's only one I saw. Like, everyone else is like generally really cool but yeah, yeah. yeah it was just this Every one particular now and then they do they do try to post this and right. you know whatever but there was somebody who maybe f- half a year ago posted there was two of them there were a couple and, and even when i approved their request i had a feeling mm. I, I really did okay and then they started mucking around and teasing people but keep saying at the end love and light and blessings and la la but you could tell they were having a they yeah. were having a good time and uh, joking and, passive and they aggressive. were ha- coming from a darker sort of energy mm. they, they definitely were you know sure and i i i chose to to delete them okay <laughs> Because, and then they contact, hey, Jean, I don't know if you're aware, we can't access anymore the page. <laughs> the like, gatekeeper well, has you know. spoken. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I saw, they were, I, I, I don't, on, on the page, I don't want to have bullying. I don't yeah. want to have people taking advantage of other people. Yeah, it needs a form of moder- moderation. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Any of those groups, it, it needs does, to be moderated. It does, it yeah. does. But on the other hand, like, we all need to take responsibility. So if, if somebody posts something and this person wants to tease somebody. Yeah. You can't tease me if I don't feel teased. Sure. You know, we can't have a war unless we take guns and we fight yeah. and we shoot each other. Mm. Guns are powerless without us being willing to have an argument and take those. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it really goes back to our own accountability. Will I, you know, will I buy into this? Mm. And that's where it comes down to personal accountability mm. you know and yes i want to jump in and delete these people and you know don't you know like mm. try to protect somebody mm. or whatever but sometimes things have to be there and and we learn from contrast mm. sometimes you need to explore certain avenues and see and learn from those avenues you know we learn from those challenging situations you find yourself in a really difficult situation. Well, I'm learning to do that now. Well, thanks to Tash. <laughs> Natasha Kelly. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Natasha. <laughs> you know, like, if I find myself in a difficult situation, I go, okay, so what's up for me? This yeah. is happening. I feel like this. This is happening in that avenue of my life. Okay, so we call that contrast, or mm-hmm. we can also call it crap, right? Mm-hmm. Crap, and this is the crap in my life right now. So I don't want this. What do I want? And from that place... I turn the other page and I write down and I visualize myself in a completely different setting based on the crap in my life. Mm. And then I take ownership, I take responsibility as best as I can. I'm not perfect. I still make mistakes. So I mm-hmm. don't make <laughs> mistake about that. Yeah. I'm far from perfect. No, no one's perfect. No here one's perfect. In but like sometimes, like, you know what? Like I was thinking about it today when I was driving here. Like we sit here and we talk about these things and. You know, people might think, oh, you know, nobody, I don't think anyone has it figured out. No. I don't think, you know, I'm sure you get angry and, yeah. you know, I fall apart yeah. and things do happen. Yeah. But again, these are those contrasts we learn from and yeah. everything serves. And once I talked, I was in a really dark place just maybe a few months ago when this whole thing with Syria and all these refugees and ha- coming from a refugee background it really brought a lot of yeah. things up for me. and. I was drowning, like I was just really not. And mm. I was labeling myself again, oh my God, post-traumatic stress disorder again. It's, mm. you know, it just was just pulling me down. But labels are bad. Don't label yourself. And I sat with my beautiful sister, Simone, 
And um, hello, Simone. <laughs> And just we chat, you know, we had a nice chat and mm. ate some nice food. And, and she just said, this is a dual world, like mm. binary, like you said. And it is created that way. Mm. And, you know, obviously we all come from the same source. This whole universe came from, if we believe in Big Bang, it all came from the same place. Yeah. And we're all part of it. Yeah. Um, so this particular world we live on is created that way. Yeah. And I do happen to believe in, in this creative force or a creator or God or universe or whatever, you, whatever people relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and what Simone said was, everything is allowed. And if it wasn't, it just wouldn't be. Mm. And, and it's like... Pretty, that's fairly profound, isn't it? It's uh, when that hit me, like it's uh, just uh, post traumatic stress disorder fell off, <laughs> <laughs> everything fell off. It's just allowed, man. Yeah. Relax, you know. It's yeah. just if it is right now, it isn't for me. Yeah, when I was a refugee, then I was a refugee. Right now, I'm not a refugee. Sure. I've got enough food, water, there's no snipers, there's no you know immediate threat or anything. Yeah. so I can relax. And, and whatever I have gained from my experiences and whatever it has created for me. And, and, you know, it's nice to look at it and say, oh, it made me stronger and then I learned this and I learned that. And it was mm. all, be like, it created a lot of issues as well. Yeah. <laughs> can't just, you know, look at things and I, I can't and just say, oh, it was all, all for a greater purpose. It, you know, you look at, it's a dual world. <laughs> sure. But it all kind of serves. And for me, it was so relaxing to hear that everything mm. is allowed. So... I was allowed then to focus again on this majestic, this amazingly magical world that mm. we call home and, and this amazing earth, this living organism that <clears throat> gives us this body and f gives us the food and water and, and air that allows us to you know, use this vehicle mm. to have this human journey and then figure out why are we here? Mm. It brings it, which brings us to you know the purpose. Like, mm. why are we here? Like, mm. why, you know, uh, what what is your purpose? Why why are you doing what you're doing? You know, and I I just want to acknowledge that. Just open bracket or big bracket. It's pretty cool. Like, I don't know anybody in Perth who's doing podcasts like this. Yeah, I, I wish there was. We need really need more of them. Yeah, <laughs> Seriously. That yeah. Be, that would be awesome. Steph, if you're watching this, and Natasha as well. Natasha started uh, doing a little, a little podcast thing, yeah. as well, a port mm. sessions. So That's cool. Yeah, which is great. So, yeah, like... Oh, thanks, Shana. Yeah, yeah, that's Appreciate awesome. It. Like, I don't know, bringing people in and talking about it. I don't know how many people, those five people there are watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> There's the same five people that watch every episode. <laughs> But yeah, like reaching people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, seriously, um, what, what, what are we doing? Mm. What am I doing? What's my purpose? What am I creating? And not just on, like, like I said, look at, first of all, start off with looking at yourself. Where am I at? What's up for me? S you know, self-awareness, reaching out, connecting with people in the moments of need and in the moments of celebration and the moments of learning, learning with each other, from each other, supporting each other, and then looking, okay, so what is my purpose? Mm. And it doesn't mean that now that I know my purpose, everything's going to be great. I'm just going to be on the cloud and just deliver my purpose and I'm going to make this world a better place. I still have to work on my own stuff that comes mm. up. Triggers are abundant. Mm. And we just work through them and learn and they hopefully better us yeah. in this journey, human journey. But all in all, it's, it's very exciting. And, uh, and I just love the idea of finally waking up to honoring, honoring my life honoring this planet, honoring the abundant gifts, mm. like my eyesight, I can see you mm. versus I can't see you, I can't see anything. Mm. Like, wow, mm. you know, like water, air, friends, love, things that I can experience, things that this body allows me to experience, mm. you know, and um, there's just so many gifts and like just really connecting with everything that is and just being present and you know unifying our intentions for the greater greater good mm -hmm. so i think that's 
what it kind of comes down to for me at the moment. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, gratitude is definitely a very important thing and mm. like uh, understanding and asking why are we here? What are we doing? Um, can I like play a little bit of devil's advocate and yeah, just say that I think we should also all bear in mind that quite possibly we're just a big fluke of nature. Like we're just this um, pro- come up from the primordial soup and turn into meat and bones and a whole bunch of neurology and um, you know we could make up there could be like a bit of story making that we do that we do to ourselves to like help uh, give some sort of validation to why we're here do you believe in that? I don't know I don't know I don't know but I think it's something that um, you know so it's more that's very much the Richard Dawkins Mm -hmm. atheist biology you know and um, to say that in this lifetime we could ever understand truly how why we're here i think it's a really really hard thing to do mm-hmm. and um but i don't think it should be forgotten about because the fact that if we are just a fluke of nature in this universe to me that's just as special as being created mm-hmm. by some divine force like if you think about it we're on this little pin pinprick in the universe this little planet it's like our home our spaceship that we hurtle through the air yeah and we've grown out of that we've grown out of this earth literally we've grown out of the earth and the sun and how amazing is that so well you know perhaps we're not here to do anything just be just be yeah or okay (laughs) let's just wrap it up (laughs) (laughs) that's it um but no but yeah i mean on the but on the flip side and who knows it could be oh, it could be avenues avenues galore mm. but perhaps we are um some sort of eternal soul that manifests itself periodically in different universes and it's all a learning experience and all that as well and but yeah who knows i, I think the most important thing is to just really um be happy with what you got yeah really. and listen that's great you're, you're right you know we don't really know ultimately we do not know mm. However, <laughs> two things. One is, even if it is like this is all just, you know, just happened. Mm. There's nothing to it really. It's just a short little human life and then it's nothing. Mm. Um, no purpose, no meaning, no creation. Mm-hmm. Still, I've got freaking mind and all these feelings and something even things that i don't even understand like yeah. my intuitions and stuff and i can i can contemplate infinity yeah i can contemplate all these things and i can if i'm aware enough look at a flower and admire it and butterflies and i can create things i can you know like it's just mm. so, so magical yeah definitely so yeah. for me you know that's one thing like even if you don't believe in anything you can still really connect with that and and love the experience Mm. but for me i have to say i connect deeply with the experience of god within Mm -hmm. and around Mm. i still don't fully connect with god within you and marty (laughs) I'm still disconnected. Marty and I are godless, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but like Tash was a couple of days ago, she brought this up and um, and I just, this learning that she shared really elevated me and gave me the, an extra sort of level, like lifted me up on the next step of experiencing divinity and God and mm-hmm and appreciating my life what what ultimately what she said was that we don't we often we are disconnected for ourselves from ourselves first mm-hmm. and then we seek a partner or some sort of fulfillment from outside people seek god outside of themselves mm-hmm. but ultimately they are disconnected if you start loving yourself and connecting with that for me i have had this experience of god within for me a, there is a place within me somewhere around my heart space where God lives. Yeah. I usually see it as a golden color light, mm-hmm. uh, energy. And when I connect with that feeling of God within and outside around me, mm-hmm. um, 
it feels so ecstatic mm. and joyful and yeah. i have nothing but love i am i am love i yeah. just melt into love sure and joy when in those moments when i connect with that and it's like oh wow i definitely know with clarity who i'm aligning with you know who who, who i'm who am i serving in my human journey like yeah. i know who i'm i'm a servant of god mm. i i i stand for light mm -hmm. i you know i still get angry <laughs> i still make mistakes but i know deep down inside what i'm aligning with sure and um for me it's a very real experience mm -hmm. and what tash was saying once you start bringing it up to the next level of really loving yourself because mm. you me jana this body this human vehicle and my experience of life as a human being called jana is the most intimate experience of existence and god that i can have mm. So when I, even now when I say that, and having done Reiki, my hands have just literally lit up. I can feel energy in my hands. I'm like, wow, it brings it up to this really joyful mm. experience. Like, wow, I'm the most, like if I connect with myself, that's the most intimate context and place through which I can connect with divinity. Sure. And it's, Thank you, Tash, for that. That's just <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing and so profound. Yeah. And what you're, what you're saying there is spot on. Like the, the, real, the only true path to God is inward. And if you've ever experienced complete love, like just pure, pure love that isn't associated with anything around you, but is just totally within you in your own experience, to me, that's, that's source connection. That's God connection. Mm. Yes, your energy, whatever you'd like to call it. Mm. And yeah, it does feel like this white golden realm. But for me, that's my understanding and the, and the proof that there's, you know, plus I've done some pretty hardcore psychedelics in the past as well. <laughs> if you want to uh, get an understanding of God, <laughs> then take a good hit of DMT and then uh, you'll be able to find out. But um, but in just in other occasions as well, you know, really, un like really feeling deep down that true self-love, like uh, experiencing God isn't done through a priest, isn't done through no. a TV evangelist or um, what your mom or dad might have told you or your Sunday school teacher. It can only ex be experienced within and that's this deep sense of uh, love. And it might only be fleeting. You might only get it for a few seconds. Yeah. Here exactly. and there, yeah, yeah. but it, once you get it just that once, you, you know what it is, and it's a very beautiful feeling. And I think going back to, I think that's where psychedelics do help people. Where it, psychedelics, uh, like it tunes your brain in, like as an, I really see the brain as being an antenna to picking up consciousness around us, mm -hmm. and it tunes it in. Uh, Graham Hancock had a great analogy. It's like a, a telescope. You know, you've got like one lens at the front of the telescope and one lens at the back, and it focuses. Like mm. it moves direction so you can tune in on a star. It's very similar to what um, psychedelics do. It tunes your brain in. And once you've had that first experience, I, I really feel like that's, that gives you the goal. That gives you the creation. And I'm, and I'm sure you can do it through, you know, like kundalini meditations, yeah. yoga. Um, yoga, you know, all that sort of stuff to achieve that state. Um, psychedelics are certainly a very direct way of doing that. But yeah, like... It really just all, all starts with the inner. I think all the um, dogma, all the teaching, all, all this um, information about finding God outside of yourself needs to stop because that's not where God is. No. It really is within. And that's what we need to sort out. That's what we need to teach people. We need, to, we need, <laughs> we need people to unlearn what they've learned about what God is. It's kind of like and this experience it themselves. themselves. Yeah. It's kind of like this, like, oh, I've just had a really profound experience and I've, you know, I'm going to share it now because I want you to benefit from it. I'm going to mm. trap it and keep it in this book. You need to read this book and follow what I've experienced yeah, exactly. and you too yeah. shall read God. This shall be you. You'll you know? be as happy as I am. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't think it works that way. But no, for some people it does. It really... Sometimes it can connect you but is it to false your though? own. Yes, but it can connect you to your own journey. 
Like I mm. was born in a communist country where there was no God when I was born. Yeah. God, uh, first concept of, of God for me was God is something, this is what my family told me, God is something people used to believe when they lived in caves. They couldn't define, you know, thunder and yeah, all there's these no natural science things. And rationalism. So they believed in God and God was the yeah. answer for all of it. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, that's what God is. Yeah. And normally every time I would lie, I would say, I swear by God's name. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's Because it didn't have any meaning to it. It had no meaning. When yeah. a child swears by God, yeah. we knew that a child was lying. This is like my childhood. Right. right. Um, and then towards war, you know, before now, I was kind of turned 10, 11, 12, whatever. That's when I started experimenting with this idea of God. Mm. And I used religion. Mm-hmm. So I learned first prayers and I started experimenting with these prayers and I I have to say that prayers are really powerful mm. yeah. intention or prayer or whatever like I usually what I've prayed for in my life from the place of raw essence and authenticity I have always been given mm. and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And to me, there's not like, and I went from, you know, experimenting with religion and then getting to the complete atheism. Like I did not believe anymore. Like I didn't mm-hmm. like that God that kind of says, well, I don't like you anymore. I'm going like to judgmental it God. all. You guys are misbehaving. I don't like you. I'm going to kill you all. But I'm going to save that no guy because he's really cool. And, you know, it's like, yeah. who does that? I don't, I don't like that sort of guy. It, no. it sounds like a computer game. And, you know, like I don't like this level of, deleted and stuff from the beginning you yeah. know like that's not a cool creator i don't yeah. like that. i don't want to have that creator I, I quickly just on that i really believe th- those myths of um the ark and you know because it's it's not just in catholicism that myth is it's in other no, no, in Abraham societies. religions because it starts with judaism yeah exactly christianity and islam but i think like you just spoke about a bit earlier it gave some explanation to past events and like we're like that's where i think science is really in um science and spirituality are coming together you know and there's been all this talk and like proof is really starting to come out about a massive cataclysm and flooding of the earth melting of the polar ice caps mm. twelve thousand years ago mm. and quite possibly the story of um uh what's his name again <laughs> the ark yeah, the guy yeah. <laughs> with the ark. what's his name no i believe noah's ark yeah yes. <laughs> it just originates to give a um like a uh, understanding of why the earth got flooded twelve twelve thousand years ago yeah yeah, but it was it was like God did it. God did it, though. and and like even with Sodom, Sodom, what, what do you call it in English? Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. yeah. So like you know, these people are all promiscuous. They're not good, and yeah. just kill them. Wipe all. them off the Wipe face of the off. earth. It's, like, well, it's not a very nice God, is it? All creation. And then I was also confused with the chosen people because it all starts with Abraham in Abraham religions, um, yeah. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right? It's, you've got these chosen people, and then he's taking the chosen people and helping the chosen people. Well, who are the other people? Yeah. Why'd you choose these guys? And why are the other ones not chosen? Yeah. Did you why are you them? judging God? Yeah. It's basically judgment. So, yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I lost religion. I lost yeah. faith at one point. It was a that moment was really hard for me. I remember it was so hard. It was worse than when war happened. Uh, cause I well, just, when you stopped believing in when religion? When I stopped fully believing in God. Not just religion. Oh, I God didn't again. believe in God. There was no God for me anymore. I didn't relate to that story of God anymore. Anymore. Okay. Not at all. And and I was maybe 23 okay. years old. And I actually got, for the first time in my life, I got depressed. I felt like a, like a, you know, like those puppets with strings and yeah. you always feel connected with somebody helping you. Yeah. And all of a sudden the strings were cut off and I found myself lying on the floor. Sure. And that's when I got a job as a school teacher in a Muslim school. And right. these people believe in every single word of the book. Yeah. And I remember thinking, ooh. Yeah. But slowly I started kind of, admiring mm. their commitment and slowly it took me on a different path yeah now i don't follow religions i you know i have my own experience of god which is what the point is i think i think we too often associate god with religion but but look at look at my journey from communist country communist child that doesn't believe in anything mm. to believing and fully relying on my prayers while you know while i was a refugee mm. and to the point where i don't believe at all to the point that i now completely utterly fully have anchored that 
yep. within my heart i know what i stand for sure. and perfect and that's the thing so everybody has to follow the doesn't have to but it would be nice if everybody kind of does this self inquiry and and journey for whatever you know is up for them yeah and yeah that's that's i love that that opportunity mm. like to do that you know in this lifetime it's just mm. why not yeah exactly it's awesome <laughs> do you know much about gnosticism do you know what gnosticism is uh no the, maybe i do better the gnostics um, were like a they were around uh, I mean, it's sort of still around. Gnosis means knowledge, right? So Gnosticism would be... It's like G-O-N... Yeah, Gnosis is knowledge in Greek, I believe. Okay, right, yeah. So their their understanding, their belief is that the monotheistic religions that have been um, in this world for the last two, three thousand years are actually of the devil, actually of bad energy you know and and when you think about it like and i don't know i don't pertain to know but like whether this is true or not but i find it interesting you know you look at um the some of the things that are done in the name of god and you know stories about again we we're just talking about flooding the earth um was it was it abraham had to kill his children I don't I know can't remember the names that. now, but yeah, yeah, like somebody had like to devil, devil tempted him and said like, well, listen, you know, he loves you because yeah, exactly yeah. that sort of stuff. But what you if know? you now torture him and yeah. do things and kill his child and duh, 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 like, yeah. is he gonna still love you and obey? It's like that's the one. Let's try. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so, who the fuck does that? I mean, what kind of <laughs> the the god that you and I know and understand and feel. That's not the God. That, like, that just no. sounds so fucking foreign to me yeah. that um, the, the God that I know and have experienced would ever do that. So that's why I really, I, you know, I'm just very wary of those religions. You know, I can definitely respect them and I can definitely understand. Well, I can, res- I can respect them to a certain extent. I can't fully respect them. But I do understand they do good work for a lot of people. Oh, I don't want to get into some anti-religion thing here, but I'm just because I'm thinking of all the bad things, all the negative things about religion as well. But if they can do like what they've done for someone like you to like help you bring you out of yeah. no understanding whatsoever and give some sort of understanding of God. I mean, a lot, quite a lot of the people within the spiritual community that I know, but you know, start as children were religious grew up in religious backgrounds and it gave them all an understanding and they might have left it and a lot of people do sort of when they're teenagers and early 20s but a lot of people end up coming back to it but in, under their own terms mm. rather than someone else's mm. and, you know which is what you've done it's yeah yeah because yeah, ultimately well again all religions will tell you it, it, you've got free will and it's really up to you what are you going to do and mm. like even in islam you know they say al rahman al rahim it's like most kind most merciful mm. in, uh, in Islam because I worked in a Muslim school I know now quite a lot about it like God has 99 names and the first two are the most kind the most merciful mm. how do you connect that with the other stories you know and yeah. and my God is definitely like what I the, what I relate to is most kind and most merciful and I yeah. do believe that the most powerful thing in the whole universe is love Sure. The energy of love, which is what God is, with it's God, just the same. Is, it's yeah. one and the same thing. Yeah. Love is disarming, and I get to tell you the story now. Yes, because like when we are faced with things that we don't like in our life, you know, like, um, you know, I can either fight or I can even choose to love you. Mm. You know, and um, there was this story that when I was contemplating this whole war and what to do if something and all that because stuff comes up for me with my war background um so yeah i was sitting and talking to my friend uh ananta ananda and he told me this story about about this chinese general wherever he would go people would hear that he was coming and he was so cruel he would kill everyone and he tortured and just pilgrimage it just it was horrible man mm. and he loved that power right mm. so he would you know before he would rock up to a village everybody would already be gone fled to the mountains and whatever so he rocks up to a place and his his soldiers are telling him you know he's asking where are the where are the people oh they all fled to the mountains you know oh excellent what about the monks? Monks, they're all, you know, they're all gone. Excellent, except for one monk, you know. It's like, what? Take me to him, you know. So they take him to this monk, and he's sitting there meditating, you know, feeling all blissed out and smiling. And this guy wakes him up and goes, hey, 
He goes, do you know who I am? And he just smiles at him and says, yes, I do. And he goes, do you know that I could just take this sword and, you know, kill you right this moment and that will be the end of you? Mm. And he said, yes, I do know that. But do you know who I am? Do you know that I could love you while you're doing that? Mm. I could still love you. And that was the moment that the general woke up. All right. So I I get goosebumps. (laughs) So this is the thing, you know? Lovely it's, story, but I just can't see that working in reality. You don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Perhaps we don't know. Like so, but the thing is, I understand the sentiment though. I, yeah. I, if I, if I fight you, we can fight, and it's you know, like there cannot be war if we are not willing to take the weapons and fight. They cannot, sure, there has to be willingness to fight. Yeah, there that intention willi- from us. Yeah. yeah. Yep, really, and, and, and it really takes time. And your free will comes down to what am I going to choose to be in the face of you mm. being aggressive? Am I going to choose to be a murderer mm. and kill you? Possibly. I don't know. I hope I never find out. Mm. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, or am I going to accept? Because this life will end one mm. day. So who do I choose to be? Like We always have this choice. Who do I choose to be in this very moment? Mm. And sometimes we make choices that we are not proud of. Yeah. And we feel that. Yeah. Yeah. But th- I think the key is not to judge ourselves. No, though. That's no. the Because t- then we start judging ourselves about that. And Which takes us back to the contrast. You know, yeah. like what do I need to learn from this? And what am yeah. I going to create from this place now? You yeah. Know? Whatever sure. doesn't feel right is, is that place from which you create. Mm-hmm. And that's apparently how this world functions. Mm. That's why we have, you know duality that's mm. why we have this contrast because that like if if everything is perfect mm. like if we are now in this perfect world we'll, we'll probably get just really really bored yeah, exactly you know yeah. like there's nothing to create nothing to do yeah. it's just so perfect we need the resistance but if there is some sort of lack or there's some sort of frustration or some sort of misunderstanding that's what gives dynamic and sure and this is what this I see this almost like a platform. I don't know if I'm right, but I imagine this whole earth and, and, and human experience to be a platform for play and, and amazing experience mm. of all these things, feelings and, you know, choices you can make. And in its imperfection, this whole system is perfect mm. because all that imperfection is pushing you to to create and do and be and choose and mm. think and move this way or that way and it's it's like a, it seems imperfect because it, it seems painful and it's like oh it's tight you know mm. what do i do from this place but it actually really pushes you mm. you know like the butterfly when it gets so tight it finally breaks through and comes out completely changed sure you know i don't know i don't know but i'd like to imagine it to be you know, that sort of system that I've That's how it described. works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, on that subject, I was sort of, my mind then always, always goes to like people living in like abject poverty and, you know, mm-hmm. living malnourished and, yes. you know, they, they really don't have any free will or ability to get out of the situation. Refugees, for example, are in camps, you know, they're, 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 their whole life is dictated to you by others. And unfortunately, those others tend to be the greedy and the powerful. Well, I shouldn't say powerful, but the greedy, the ego-based, the insecure, the angry. You know, And they, they're the ones in our world who tend to be... It's almost like they're the custodians of the poor because they're the ones keeping the poor poor. They're the ones keeping poor countries poor. They're the ones keeping individuals poor, villages, whatever it might be. Um, there's, it's becoming clearer and clearer that for this day and age, for there to be 7 billion people, it's not the issue that we have too many people in this world. It's what we do with the our resources. Yeah. yeah, it's the distribution. And uh, like, how do you change that? Like going back to that story with the uh, monk and just showing love and awakening people, I don't, I don't see that works 100% I, I, I of the time. Think, look, Rumi. You know, have you ever read some of the Rumi? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, he lived few. God knows when. And like yeah. all the Greek Beautiful philosophers. Beautiful poet. I know. Yeah. But the people contemplate the stuff we talk about today, <laughs> you know, thousands of years ago. Yeah. You know? And um, this is not new. Yeah. 
but what's we're still new, struggling with it. <laughs> well, the, what's new is 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 communication, like yeah, it's co- connectivity, internet, connectivity, mm. and and when you look around, a lot of people. I don't know. Is it just because I've surrounded myself with people like that? But like a lot of people are talking about this. Yeah, and it's really it's not just you. It's not just me. It's people are talking about this in other interviews and other podcasts mm. around the world. Yeah. So so it comes down. I really what you just you know inquired about. I think it comes down. Like I can't make you do anything or see yeah. anything or perceive anything you will have to experience and make your own decision and your based on your feeling the way you act yeah. that's why i can only have love and respect for wherever you're at yeah you are doing your absolute best and that guy fighting with the guy he's doing his absolute best mm. and that really crazy rich dude you know getting as much money as he can and getting like really obscenely rich that's his freaking best. Is it though, Jana? I think it probably is. Can you believe? It probably freaking is. <sighs> I don't know, mate. I don't. Maybe I don't it is. I don't know. That's but. the thing. I really think that every single one of us is doing our best, and we just have to take responsibility for ourselves. So I Definitely. do my thing, and Definitely. I will be who I am, and I will stand for what I stand, and I will choose who I'm going to be the best way I can in face of whatever happens. You know, it's that Gandhi quote: "Be the change you want to see in the world," yeah. and that's really where it starts from. I think that's that's the going back to that story again. I think that the real analogy in that is really just about like that monk is just pure love. He's mm. being, and he's loving towards any you know towards that um, any exterior force, and that's the only thing he can do. Yeah. That's the only and listen, thing he, could he could have he could have been killed in that moment, but he ch- he would have had power to choose how he's gonna go. Sure, you know, I don't know. This yeah. is a bit nostalgic and romantic way of looking. I know at what you it. mean, though. Yeah, but but you know, yeah. I don't know. That's apparently what free will is all about. Who yeah. do you choose to be in face of what's happening, and what are you gonna stand for? Yeah, what are you gonna align yourself with? Sure, you know, and I don't know. Maybe we cannot fight people into peace you know mm. we can only inquire and find our own inner peace and be peace and see peace in others mm. and smile to people like smile at you until you feel peace mm. and then you feel disarmed you know because if you fight me and if we are engaged in a, some sort of argument and physical fight mm. you know it's just going to be opportunity after opportunity who's going to hit next. Yeah. But if I stand in front of you and put my hands down and I smile at you, you can still punch me, <laughs> which is fair enough. That's going to be your choice. Mm. But I can, there is a chance that my smile and my heart and my energy will, of love will actually disarm you because love can disarm. It's a very good chance that it could happen, <laughs> but I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm saying but a lot with this conversation. But with <laughs> but. Like I'm trying to look from the rational because, like, I think sometimes we forget about the rational point of view. Like, say if someone, like, for that monk, is in his monastery, yeah. that's his home. Like, if someone came into my home with a great big sword, sword or gun, I wouldn't be just sitting there telling this guy that. Especially if I had my wife and children, you know what I mean? Like. I'd probably kill the guy. Like a real, I, don't, I can't see how love would change someone who is coming into intentionally. But it did in this, in this case. In this case, it did. Would you take that risk though? Being a refugee, I'd probably run away. <laughs> I'd be up in the mountains. Well, being a, you're a human being though too. <laughs> you, you know, know? Like, you're a human being. Yeah, that's me. Like I just love life so much, and I felt in the moment I actually left my hometown two days before the war started. Mm. I was 14 and everybody, my family stayed, everybody stayed. I just had a really strong feeling I didn't want to be there. Yeah, get and the I, I, And I asked my parents and they sent me to my uncle and I didn't even know, you know, I wasn't sure that this thing was going to happen and two days later I'm watching the news that the war started. Yeah. Same thing when I came here, literally a month or so ago, a um, few months later, sorry, a so few months after I came here, NATO bombed Serbia, where I was a refugee. No, right. Not as you know, as aggressive as a as, as previous. As yeah. The, the, yeah, but but sure. they did when you know it, there was freaking bombing and war and and, yeah. and people were in the you know hiding and sirens and stuff nights and yeah. it was horrible. Sure. So I didn't experience that either. Yeah, right. So if you ever see me leaving Australia, <laughs> <"Hello."> <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll say, guys, so you know, time to leave. Be like the rats leaving a sinking <laughs> ship. That's it. I'm, I'm the first one in the line. <laughs> 
I don't know. But like, what I'm trying, what I wanted to say is, maybe that was my journey. That that, yeah. that, that in the compass that told yeah. me, no, no, pack your stuff and, sure. and let's go. And I don't know. This time, would would I choose to experience running away, or would I choose to experience something else? Yeah, I yeah, I don't exactly. Know. It depends where you are in your life. And and, and yeah. back to those people that you say, you know, I I was I experienced hunger. I used to drink water. I was so hungry that I would actually wake up in the middle of the night coughing because I was so hungry mm. and I would drink water to trick my stomach into believing there's something in it. Yeah, right. You know, but I still had a great time. I had lots of friends. I had mm. a boyfriend. We listened to music. We danced and partied. Mm. And, you know, you don't really know. Like, we had such sense of, you know, there was not much to do. We didn't have nine to five jobs. Mm. We were poor, sure. but we were having a great time together. Sure. So I don't know what what this is all about and why is it the way it is and and can we have a world where everybody is going to be a little bit more like harmonious or harmonious something. not just mm. harmonious but like in, in in regards to the distribution of resources and wealth right okay that we all going to be kind of at a similar sort of level i'd yeah. love that mm. you know and possibly you know we will get there i mm. really would like to think that we will yeah I, I think we will i think it's gonna but it's not just going to be on spirituality alone it's not going to be on love alone i think it's going to be it's going to be definitely an important part but also think technology is going to play its part mm. that's where we really i don't think we should be afraid of technology i don't think we should be afraid of what we're creating we're birthing something into this reality mm. that's pretty um, plain to see artificial intelligence etc i really think to change this world effectively we're going to have to marry the two together spirit and science and that's and, what's going to take social social i don't know if we're going to completely get rid of the social establishments you know like yeah all like all the stuff. old guard and yeah, yeah. Or are we going to infl- infiltrate into it like for example yeah change it from the inside yeah Yeah. so for example uh somebody i met on 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 my page first tribe awakening uh danny carter he is i think he lives somewhere in kimberley or kanana somewhere and he is doing you know he's trying to push into politics over there local politics so he's not gonna sit there and just you know do what i'm doing he wants to get in and there's gonna be probably more and more people oh yeah definitely like this or or who are already in places of power that's gonna they're gonna wake up and see things and will will ask themselves what is my purpose what do i want to stand for yeah how am i gonna like what's gonna be my legacy what am i doing here and maybe they will maybe we will all that's what i'm saying it comes from self-inquiry it comes from that self-awareness you know doing your own journey looking and then connecting with your purpose and doing what you got to do mm. and more and more of us are walking this path and doing this thing i don't know is it some planetary alignment that's making us do that what's going on that is so massive and it's global mm. uh but i think you know it could happen like that or you know i don't know it's, it's yeah. going to be for different people in, in different ways or it could be something that we never we can't even fathom right now yeah. you know yeah. like you look at what the internet's done and how the internet has benefited us um over the last, hang on. We still there? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Um, <laughs> you know, how it's benefited us over the last 20 years, but whoever saw the internet coming? Like yeah. 30 years ago, like oh who, who would have saw the internet coming in a profound um, implication it's had on our lives? Like, the, it stands to reason that'll happen again. Like, there, mm-hmm. there will definitely be something coming to our lives in the future, which is going to benefit us immensely that we can't even comprehend, begin to comprehend. Yeah. But it will be something to do with com- um, communication, connectivity. I think, like, I just want to go back to, like, getting into, like, people getting into establishments and changing from the inside out. I look at people like um, uh, that Prime Minister of Canada. I can't think of his name. Mm. But there's all these yeah, different yeah, things yeah, going yeah. about what he's doing. I think those people have always been there. Like, there's a lot of people that go into politics, the police force, even the military with best intentions yeah. they, they really believe what they're doing you know they're doing it for the, the you know they might be misguided in certain areas but you know generally they, they do it and they're, they're very um aware of you know bringing in something good but the actual establishment they join corrupts them most often and we've seen it in politics we see it in, in the police force we see it in the military and what what it's what it's going to take is for people to stand more solid in who they are and like approach these things, be amongst these establishments, but not sell out really is is the is the term and really stay strong in 
who they are and what they're doing there. And I think that's what we're going to find in the future is more people really stand up and stick to their guns like this guy who's now the Prime Minister of Canada. Mm. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm. I can see someone coming along like that in Australia in the next 15, 20 years. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, I really believe. Maybe even sooner. Maybe even sooner. Perhaps in 2016. Are we, are we having another election? Are we I having another know. election? I've got no idea. I'm We've had so many Prime Ministers, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I've stopped following since Tony Abbott propped up. I was like, oh, uh, this is bad. This is bad. Do you know what? He actually, he, Tony Abbott actually allowed me to enjoy politics really? more. Yeah, because oh, I thought I it was like a soap opera. Like uh, some of the headlines and some of the things we'd say. Listen, there's some, things, so that, funny. some things that are meant to be, but it's not funny when they decide on your freaking life. Mm. You know, he's making decisions that affect so many people like who who chose you yeah is this really possible like when you see him at like these international you know conferences yeah. nobody's taking seriously. he's not well liked no yeah. they're like what the is this dude yeah. what happens to australia you know it's just my, my friend Aisha, like, she, to me, she said to her that proves that we're just in a simulation theory, that it's all just made up. Mm. The fact that we got someone like Tony Abbott had him as a prime minister. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, Shana, perhaps we can end with something we sort of wanted to talk about, but we didn't really discuss. But, like, <laughs> what does 2016 hold in store for us? Can you put your clairvoyant? I'm trying to connect with it. Um, hat on? Yeah. I, what I, would you like to see in 2016? I'd like to see what I've been seeing so far. Um, people, people seeking, people connecting, people um, reaching out either to be helped or to help others, mm -hmm. uh, coming together in communities, um, self-inquiry, self-awareness, um, looking after themselves, taking responsibility for the food that they eat, uh, for their lifestyles, for their relationships with with themselves first. Sure. With I have to say God within, and with with people around themselves, and you know, and that's again as I'm saying, you know, I don't have it sorted out, but that's my contrast. That's what I am going to be doing. That's my area of work as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just like. Just continuous work and loving your experience as much as you can, connecting with the joy that it is to be alive, mm. to know people like we have, to know somebody like you, and mm -hmm. you know, and to yes, you're very fortunate, I'm very Jana. Fortunate you're a very fortunate woman, <laughs> but like you know, just do oh, there's so many amazing people, and yeah, you can create it's incredible. things like just last, yeah. last year, just you know, I had this idea of having this event around music mm. the music is the medicine music is healing why can't we ask you know and i was like oh, okay I'll, I'll. I, it felt like the idea dropped from somewhere sure. into my mind and i asked these musicians uh they felt right to ask again mm. and they all said yes yeah. and i was like Brilliant. really wow so like you know uh, i'd like to invite people to create stuff you know just mm. get out there and do things you know don't get stopped by you know, what if and who am I? Who am I? Who am I to have a podcast? You know, who am I to be invited, you know, to a podcast? Who am I to organize a music event? Who am I? You know, this it's happening everywhere and we all can play. We can all come out and play. We can all support each other in the work that we do and we can create our own uh, events and, and things that... Art, whatever, yeah. yeah. whatever it is that yeah. is your, your, you know, medium music, and yeah. or avenue to, you know, explore. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Come brilliant. And play. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, let's, let's go and play. That's it. That's what I want to do. In just play. In 2016, we're going to play. Abundance, joy. Sounds good to me. Community, connecting, responsibility. Oh, bring it on. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, how about we'll end it there, I think, Jana. It's been mm. really enjoyable to have a chat about this. There's like a million other things I'm sure oh, we could God. talk about right now. But uh, I wanted to ask you about your DMT experience because, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, like, next time maybe. Okay, yeah, next time. Next sure, time. sure. I don't think I've spoken about my DMT experiences. Well, that would be. Yeah. Maybe I can interview sure. you next. 
<laughs> sure. Maybe. We'll see. We'll okay. see. Or bring somebody else who knows more about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd love to get like, I'd love to do um, one with like, there's a guy called Richard Strassman who wrote the DMT, the spirit molecule. Oh, wow. And did all like, this is um, university testing on um, DMT experiences and um yeah it was, it's quite an interesting book they made it to a documentary too if anyone's interested dmt spirit molecule gives you quite an interesting take on um psychedelics and god <laughs> and aliens and clowns as well yeah it's interesting <laughs> sounds interesting uh are you would you like to give the perth tribe awakening a plug please That'd be good. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so we'll we'll definitely post this on Perth Tribe, where sure. all the cool things appear. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, so thank you so much for having me here and uh, and inviting me to your first podcast with your name sure. and. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mean like plug my podcast on no. Perth Trouble Awakening. Mean? I mean plug. Help me out. So what did you plug mean? Perth Trouble Awakening on this podcast? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So how can people find Perth Trouble Awakening? Uh huh. Well, don't worry it's about very my simple. podcast. I'm sure <laughs> you've got a Facebook. Sure. <laughs> it's the blue, you know, what's it called? The interface, blue interface. Yeah. And you enter into the search bit. Perth Tribe Awakening and that's where the group that's where it comes up it's a beautiful little page where people rock up to either promote the events or get inspired or find whatever reson they resonate with and um, yeah. yeah explore different things connect with people and yeah. yeah and you've done a great job with Jana you know and 4,000 members it's wow. fantastic I and can't believe I'm yeah like and many more to go I mean that's just going to keep growing we'll and we'll I think see. the work you put into it is definitely a big part of it because you could have just sort of I've seen that happen before I was part of a group which was actually a defining thing in my life about four or five years ago called Philosophy Night it was called and it was brilliant but we sort of lost any moderation with it all and it just ended up petering out mm. and it petered out through a lot of um and i was one of these people that was involved with all this too but a lot of um division in it you know and arguments and, mm. and things like that so yeah it's wonderful to see what you're doing with perth tribal awakening and uh yeah there's i mean there's many more out there guys especially guys from perth um there's lots of different facebook groups so um yeah just have a look around and i'm sure you'll you'll there find is, them there's actually a pinned post first <laughs> post on our page is a list of other similar sort of uh, groups mm -hmm. because there was like there was a request people were asking why can't you just have about events or why can't you have just about that about that and then uh, Rowena um, was you know kind enough to create a like a pay uh, a little post where she named every single page that exists in Perth Oh, really? It's relevant. Yeah, okay. and it's a pinned post. I've so saw, I saw that, but I didn't yeah, click on yeah. it. So oh, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, man. So that way, yeah. Perth Tribe Awakening can be what it is. Yeah. And if people are looking for just events, they can go to the yeah. page that is just about events. And sure. we can still have fun and yeah. post about events and, and whatever comes up. Because that's the thing I'd, I would have liked, especially in the past, but I don't feel the same way anymore, but I would have liked to have seen more creativity in Perth Tribe Awakening. It was more just like people posting things they were doing. And I know that's the reason you started up in mm, the first mm. place, but it had like, I just felt like it always had this so much more potential for like people to... Um, you know, just post experiences yeah. or whatever it might and be. And I would love that. I'd like to yeah. invite people. There should be you know. more and more people doing that yeah, rather just than just sort of plugging reflections and, and they do yeah. that. Occasionally somebody will post like somebody, I remember yesterday was it like this woman was driving and the little white phone. Yeah, yeah that was good. Like yeah, stuff, like, stuff that. like that. Yeah, just, definitely. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, you know, let's have more of that. Feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's more of that people. Let's go. Yes, let's, please. <laughs> let's share the fun stuff. It's important. Okay. I think we'll do it. I think we'll leave it there, Jana. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, if you're still with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The five might have whittled down to four, but that's all right. Um, yeah. And yeah, thank, like Jana said, thank you very much, everyone, for, you know, who tuned in. And uh, looking at it, I'm going to try and not try. I will be pumping out more of these more regularly now that university's finished and my summertime work isn't as busy and I'll have a bit more energy. So, uh, yeah, until April. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going away in April, so I'm going to do as many as I can before then. Awesome. And then perhaps do some while I'm away too. I need to work that little part out. Awesome. So, yeah. Again, thank you very much, Jana. Thank you very much thank to you. everyone watching out there. 
and you'll please be on the podcast again some other time i'm sure of course <laughs> <laughs> hope so look forward to it be better yeah. be better yeah thank you very much and yeah thanks guys see you next time see you next time bye <laughs>